What's up and welcome back to Interpreting the Stars where today we're doing another ranking video. This time we're taking a look at the Saw Marathon of films. Initially I had planned to do this after I saw Spiral, but given how that was delayed until next year, we'll just have to make do and make a ranking video now. I started this marathon back in April of this year and now it's July. Now before I get into the ranking, let me know your thoughts on the series overall. If you found it to be a guilty pleasure series like I do, or if you couldn't quite get past maybe the first two movies. So go ahead, do that down below. I'll start my ranking now. Let's get cracking. In eighth place, also known as last place, is Saw 3D with a score of 58%. This is the one that's 3D. It's the one that doesn't feel like Saw at all. A lot of people would probably say I'm even being too generous by saying 58%, but that's mostly because it's a guilty pleasure series through and through, and I can find something enjoyable about every single one of these movies. But this is definitely the worst movie, as it no longer atmospherically feels like Saw. It's too bright, there's too much focus on CGI, and little to no focus on practical effects. Jigsaw's ideologies no longer make sense, and it's furthest from where he began. The 3D is so much in your face that a majority of people watching this movie who can't watch it in 3D won't be able to enjoy anything about it. I saw it in 3D, so I was mostly having an okay time, but not everybody has that luxury. In 7th place, at 66%, is Saw 6. This is the one that I consider to be the most forgettable Saw film out of the bunch. It's about an insurance agent that makes predictions on who lives and who dies, and Jigsaw puts him to the test to show him that he has flaws in this calculation. Right before there was Saw 3D, there was Saw 6, and this was during a period of the franchise that movies were just getting worse and worse. Here's what I said about the film in my initial review. The well-oiled machine known as the Saw universe no longer feels like events were planned out in advance, and instead, it feels like it just needs to cover itself for the plot holes that it constantly creates for itself. It's not a great movie, and it is the most forgettable one out of the bunch. In sixth place at 76% is Saw 5. This is the one that might remind you of Saw 2 based off of the victim's predicament, but it's, uh, it's a little bit messier with Hoffman's inclusion. Like I said, there was a downhill spiral, no pun intended, in this series where at some point, movies just got worse and worse. But 76% isn't a bad score. It actually means decent to me, just not as good as some of the other movies. The best thing about it was it took a huge page out of Saw 2, and it brought groups of victims together again, and it was actually really smart in planning out their traps. But there was way too much focus on Detective Hoffman doing his thing, and the pacing was really messed up because of it. In fifth place at 77% is Saw 2. This is the movie with the group of victims going trap by trap in an escape room-like scenario while Detective Matthews tries to save his son who is one of the victims. I guess it's no mistake that Saw 5 and Saw 2 have virtually the same score as they virtually have the same story. And I know a lot of people think that this is the best movie out of the bunch and I understand where you're coming from, but technicalities are important. The best thing about this movie, in my opinion, is the kid. It's the only Saw film with a child as a victim, and that's something that really puts people on edge and makes them care about something going on in a movie. I can appreciate that. But the main problem I had with this film is that a lot of these characters felt like they blended in together, and I didn't fully believe that they fit Jigsaw's ideology very well. Still a good movie, but I don't necessarily think that it's the best. In fourth place at 80% is Saw. This is the one that started it all, the two guys chained to the opposite sides of a bathroom with a dead guy laying on the floor. This first film in the series is iconic. It's iconic because it's one of the best psychological thriller movies out there. It's also barely a Saw movie, even though it's the first one, because it wasn't about trap after trap, twisted murder after twisted murder. It was about these two guys freaking going crazy for the length of the film, and you feel that insanity that fear, that unknown, but at the same time, technically speaking, you also feel that lack of budget. You feel that bad acting. These are all things that bring it down. In third place at 83% is Jigsaw. This is the most recent film, the one where a bunch of detectives discover Jigsaw-like traps 10 years after he died, leading them to think that maybe he could still be alive. The last Saw movie is better than the first? Preposterous! No, actually it was made very well from a technical perspective, while the first wasn't really. It also felt more or less like Saw should feel like, even though it wasn't perfect. It was also the third film in the series to do the whole group going through traps together scenario, and it wasn't a bad example of it, so third place. In second place at 84% is Saw 4. 
This is the one with Officer Riggs running around the city trying to find the next Jigsaw Trap based off of his obsession. What's so good about Saw 4? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is the autopsy scene and how medically accurate it feels like, which puts a whole new spin on gore in general. And it also feels pretty different as a Saw film because you got this guy pretty much willingly going through traps because of his obsession. And so he's a victim that's free to leave, free to go to work, go to the library, whatever. But he goes to traps because he can't help himself. That's pretty awesome. The problem with it is that it's slightly busy. There's a lot of stuff to consider with it that makes it imperfect in the long term. Plus, Officer Riggs is not a very memorable character. In first place, at 84% as well, is Saw 3. This is the one where the guy is tasked with carrying out revenge against the guy that killed his son. It's also known as the one with the doctor and where John Kramer is dying and she has to perform rudimentary brain surgery on him. So yeah, this is scored the same as Saw 4 because I feel the same about both, but it's in first place because my bias score of Saw 3 was 94%, while it was 92 for Saw 4. That's a one star difference in my rating model. So it's really hard to pick apart what it is about this movie that's done so well. But truthfully, I think it's the fact that this one is like two movies going on at the same time, yet they are both connected in brilliant, brilliant ways. And that's it. That's my Saw Marathon. When we add up all these scores and average them out, we get a final score of 76% for the franchise, which which means as a whole, it's not a bad series. Though, I think a majority of people would have words about that. I don't think many people actually like most of these movies. That's where I'm the weirdo, but I would like to hear your thoughts on it and how you would rank everything in the comment section down below. So let me know. As for YouTube, you know what to do. If you like this ranking video, make sure that you hit subscribe because there's always more like it coming out. Hit the thumbs up button because that always helps out my channel. And don't forget about the little bell icon because that'll help notify you when I come out with another ranking video. And until then, Peace out.